This is this begins the medical portion. So if you find medical imaging disturbing, the door is right there. So thank you, Mark, for for this uh, introduction. Yes, we will leave now uh, space exploration uh, for human body exploration. So I will start uh, showing you ancient dead bodies and. Uh, Richard Brayman will continue with the living ones. Uh, so, we will talk about uh, the advantages and problems uh, in analyzing and presenting ancient artifacts. Um, and so, uh, I at AMA Solutions, uh, we work in two main domains. Uh, for museography, uh, using CT scanning, MRI, micro CT, computer graphics, and also uh, in medical activity, um, using the same core technology, uh, CT scanning, 3D reconstructions, to provide uh, custom-made patient implants in maxillofacial and cranial surgery. So, uh, let's have a look at uh, the core technology uh, called volumetric visualization or voxel visualization. So here you are the artifact placed on the table of uh, the CT scanner. And what you can see is the X-ray tube uh, and on the right, the dicom slices, uh, which are a kind of stack of gray level images. So that's the starting point of studying uh, ancient artifacts. So each slice is composed of a, what we call a voxel grid. Um, and the goal is to stack them together to get at the end a kind of X, Y, Z volumetric voxel grid which represents the object in its entire volume. Uh, so, after that, what can be the advantages of using stereo? You know, we are working on kind of dead bodies with many intricate and mixed structures and complex shapes. And that might be difficult to identify region of interest, extracting, extracting this information um, to have a better overview and uh, interpretation. So, Hopefully for us, the stereo can add this kind of third dimension that can help you analyzing your data sets. So, um, to be quick, uh, you know, you have uh, the analogic and numeric systems, which are using two real cameras. Um, these systems were invented as cinema at the same time, in fact, so that's not a new technology. And uh, right now, uh, since uh, years, you can use two virtual cameras to um, create stereo content from 3D softwares. But the goal of these two kinds of techniques is, of course, to mimic uh, the binocular vision of humans. So, for us, we can use stereo uh, at two levels. Um, the first one is for analyzing CT scan data sets, so we get a better spatial representation, so that it's more easy for us, easier for us to segment complex shapes. And if you use also kind of, um, you know, haptic devices, force feedback haptic devices with stereoscopy, you are not far from being able to say, okay, 
I'm working on a kind of virtual dissection system or virtual autopsy system. Um, so that's the good point. The bad ones is that uh, you have to really take care about uh, fine-tuning stereo parameters to do not get ghosting effects and of course rendering times are twice slower because you have, you have two eyes to render, the left and the right, so um, that's twice slower to render. So uh, for exhibition we can also use of course uh, 3D stereoscopy, as that's what we are doing. And of course, you will have a better spatial representation of complex shapes and anatomy um, to create so, immersive exhibitions. And in general, kids really love this kind of events. So that's a good way to, um, for museums to make people coming. The bad ones, the bad. Uh, the challenge is, is that uh, you have to fine-tune parameters using a really great kind of hardware. Um, around that, it depends on uh, articles, but around 15% uh, uh, of population is stereo blind, you know, uh, because of binocular vision defects. So uh, you have to take care about that. And also you have to take in account when, you're, when you are working for museums uh, to be realist uh, looking at the cost of the equipment and the space also. So what will you see now? Not this blockbuster one, but a two real mummy. Uh, that's a project we worked uh, on um, in at last 208 for a French museum uh, of archaeology and uh, we analyzed and provided uh, an immersive exhibition for this museum. Uh, on your left you can see the Ceremon mummy which was a priest uh, at the temple of Karnak in the Theban city in Egypt. Uh, that's um, 1000 BC mummy, um, and on your right, that's a mummy called Ankh Red, which was a drawer at the same Karnak temple, but three centuries after Sirama, so it was 700 uh, BC uh, mummy. These images show them as they are exhibited at the museum, so when visitors uh, came into this museum, what they saw is just two mummies in their wrappings and bandages, no more. So, I will give you some information about what you will see in the upcoming movie, uh, because it's a pure aesthetic one. Uh, we do not put in any commentaries on it, just a kind of original soundtrack. So, here is the first mummy ceremony, or the first mummy you will see in the movie, uh, without the wrappings. So you will see many amulets that was like, a, you know, a, a kinder, many surprises. So uh, on the top you can see the necklace composed of 12 little amulets. So uh, that was really great to segment and to work on, really nice. Um, the second one is uh, Earth Scarab Beetle, with, you can see, kind of glyph on the ventral face. And at the end, you have uh, the four sons of Horus, which are there to protect the organs of the body into the afterlife. The second one is uh, called Ankh Pakered, you know, and you will recognize a, a net um, made of clay, clay net and amulets, and um, inside the thoracic cavity, you will recognize three salt packages used to 
desiccate the body to protect it from the defects of the time, to remove the water for a better conservation. So, thanks, thank you for, for your attention, and we will be ready to start the movie right now.